A lot of the time, your applications are made to be public and shared with the world. Sometimes, however, you need to be a bit more careful. When you deploy your apps on Fly.io, you get a private network for each organization. This lets your applications in other continents contact each other like they're in the same room. Sometimes you need a middle ground between fully public apps and fully private apps. And Flycast is there for when you need it. Flycast addresses are private but global IPv6 addresses inside your private network that go through the Fly proxy, so you get all of the load management and machine waking powers that you get for free with public apps. Today I'm going to cover what Flycast is, when and why you'd want to use it, and show you how to create an instance of Olama that you can connect to privately over Flycast. Before I show you how to use it, let's talk about Flycast and when you would want to use it. In general, we can split every kind of Fly app into two categories, public apps and private apps. A public app is what you'd expose to the internet for your users. These are usually hardened apps that allow users to do some things, but have access limitations that prevent them from stepping outside their bounds. These are mostly programs that listen over HTTP for browsers to interact with. Your users connect to a public app through the platform router via the fly.dev domain or whatever domain you've set up. A private app is something internal, like a database or a worker queue. These are things that run in the background and help you get things done, but they're intentionally designed to not be exposed to the public internet. You wouldn't want to expose your Postgres or Valky servers to just anyone, would you? One key caveat is that with a fully private app, all connections go directly to the relevant machines with their .internal addresses, so you have to keep them running 24-7 to maintain 24-7 connectivity. This is fine for services like database engines where you really want them to be running all the time, but what about an administrative panel? You want your administrative panel to be separate from your main app so that users can never get into it, even by a programming accident, but you also want it to shut down when it's not in use. Flycast exists for this middle category of apps. With Flycast, your apps are only visible over your organization's private network, but any traffic to them goes through the proxy so that they can turn on when you need them and turn off when you don't. This allows your administrative panels to be physically separate so that users can't access them by accident. When you want to connect to an app via Flycast, you connect to appname.flycast. Just a quick heads up from a security perspective. In general, it is probably a really bad idea to assume that network access barriers like Flycast or VPCs or even NAT are security layers. At best, these are obfuscation layers that make it more difficult for attackers to get into private applications. Flycast is not a replacement for authentication in your private applications. This is because with Flycast, you don't know who a request is coming from, but you do know that it's coming from something or someone that's connected to your private network. One of the biggest platform features that uses Flycast out of the box with is Fly Postgres. Even though Flycast addresses are local to your private network, Fly Postgres still configures usernames and passwords for your database, and you are required to use them. Today I'm going to show you how to use Flycast by setting up an instance of Olama. Olama is a program that wraps large language models and gives you an interface like Docker so that you can run open weights large language models privately on your own device. Large language models are computationally expensive to run, so being able to offload them to a GPU-powered fly machine means you can hack around all you want without burning up your precious battery life. Olama doesn't ship with authentication by default. When you create an instance of Olama, anyone can access it without entering in a username, password, or API key. This is fine for running your own models on your own computer, this is part of their threat model, but it means that if you want to expose it to the internet, then anyone can use it and run whatever models they want whenever they want. This is where Flycast comes in. Flycast lets you run a copy of Olama on your private network so that you and your apps can access it, but nobody else. Flycast also lets you have the platform turn off your Olama server when you're not using it, which will save you money. This is why Olama is a great out of the box example of that middle ground case that Flycast is perfect for. In order to get started, you need to have the following. First, you need an account with fly.io, which you can make on fly.io. Second, you need to have Flycuddle installed. The link for how to install Flycuddle is in the description. If you want to interact with your Flycast apps directly from your computer, like using the Olama CLI to poke your cloud GPU, you're going to need to jack into your private network with WireGuard. The link, including a video tutorial on how to do that, is in the description. To get started, Let's create a new folder on your computer called Olama and go into it. 
This is where we're going to put the Olama configuration as well as have fly launch ex extract some files for us. Open a terminal in that folder and run this fly launch command. It's going to be fly launch dash dash from https colon slash slash github.com slash fly dash apps slash olama dash demo. And we're going to add the no deploy flag to make sure that it doesn't automatically get deployed. So we're going to create a new app based on this configuration. And oh, the day app name Olama demo is already taken. Let's continue in the web UI. I'll drag it over real quick. So we need to give it an app name. Let's call this Flycast Olama. That's not taken. Perfect. Now we have we have it in our personal organization. We have this in ORD. The VM size here is wrong. I'll file a bug about that. We don't need Postgres, Tigris, Redis, or Sentry, so we confirm settings. Launch settings confirmed. We go back here, and now we can deploy it, but we're not going to deploy it yet. First, we need to create a Flycast IPv6 address. So I'm going to clear the terminal so that you can all read the commands easier. And then I'm going to run fly ips allocate dash v6 dash dash private. This will create a new private IPv6 address with FDAA 319.9018.01 colon colon 8. We don't need to worry about what this IP address is because we're going to access it with DNS most of the time. So now that everything's ready, we can run fly deploy. And here we go. It's automatically going to create a machine. It's automatically going to create a volume to store all the downloaded models and it's going to make sure that the machine is up and running at least once, and then the platform will put it to sleep. Awesome. So now this is done, we can see the list of IP addresses associated to an app with fly IPs list. Perfect. So we see that that IP address that we just created one minute ago is private and global, and there's no public addresses. If, an app, if this app had public addresses, the, flies, the fly IPs list for that would look something like this. Don't worry about the app in particular. This is just another app I created for an example. As you can see, it has something in the 2000 block of IPv6 and an IPv4 address that isn't in any of the private ranges, at least as far as I'm aware. Now that we've made the app, we have it running and it's private. Let's open an interactive shell machine to play around with Flycast. Let's create a machine with fly machine run dash dash shell Ubuntu. This will create a new machine running Ubuntu and give us a shell by launching bash. Perfect, we're in. So one of the first things we need to do is install some utilities in order to play with the Flycast machine. Out of the box, the Ubuntu Docker image doesn't come with practically anything we need. So I'm going to run apt update and and apt install dash y curl iputils ping and dns utils so that we install the ping, curl, and dig commands. This will just take a second. When you connect to an app over Flycast, you need to connect to a dot Flycast domain. Let's look up the, D the DNS address of our Flycast machine with nslookup flycast-olama.flycast. And bam, we get the same IP address we got earlier. Perfect. Let's try pinging it and see what happens. I'm going to run the command ping flycast-olama.flycast-c2. So it pings it twice and then returns a summary. Awesome. We've proved that we have basic IP connectivity but now let's see what happens if we try to connect with curl. Right here, I have the command curl http colon slash slash flycast dash olama dot flycast. And at the end, I put a little echo statement so it's a bit easier to read. And we see olama is running. Cool. Let's see what happens if we run this request again after a little while when the platform has put olama to sleep. In my shell, I have time curl http colon slash slash flycast dash olama dot flycast. Let's see what happens. It's going to take a little bit, and then it's eventually going to return the response we want. 
Perfect. It took a moment for Olama to spin up, for health checks to pass, and the request to get through to the Olama server, but now we get a happy Olama is running me message. Let's see what happens if we do another request right away. Running another curl request when the machine's already woken up means that it responds basically instantly. And if we wait a few moments, it'll spin back down when it's done. So now that we've demonstrated that we not only have DNS, IP, and basic HTTP connectivity to our Llama server, let's actually put it into action by running Llama 3. I'm going to exit out of this shell by pressing X, by pressing Control D, but you can type in exit and press enter. Control D just tells the shell that we're ending the file, which in this case means that we're ending the input to the shell. Now I'm going to create an Olama shell with fly machine run dash dash shell Olama slash Olama. This is like that earlier shell command, but it's going to be making it on the Olama image instead of just the Ubuntu image. And now we can point the Olama client to our flycast machine by using the export command to set an environment variable. As you can see, I've typed in export olama underscore host equals http colon slash slash flycast dash olama dot flycast. The same URL I gave to curl. Cool. And then now we can do olama run llama three. Why is the sky blue? What this will do is this will tell the Olama server to pull a copy of Llama 3 if it doesn't have it already, and then it'll load it into the GPU memory and execute it as fast as the hardware will allow. And now that it did that, it's going to run the model, and there we go. We see that, that the sky is blue because of Rayleigh scattering. And there we go. We've covered what Flycast is, why you'd want to use it, and we set up an instance of Olama to show it off. You can use Flycast with any application that listens over HTTP or TCP without any modification to your code. UDP, however, is a little bit more tricky due to the fact that there's no sessions, but I linked some documentation in the description that you can follow on how to set up UDP with Flycast. I hope this helped you learn more about the platform and all the cool hacks you can pull off on it. If you have any questions or want me to cover anything else in the future, please leave a comment in the box down below. And if you've created something cool with Flycast, also leave a comment or shout us out on Twitter at fly.io. Have a good day, everyone.